Following our Baldur's Gate 3 video talking a bit about optimal party composition and what makes a good party in Baldur's Gate 3, I thought it would be a fantastic idea to talk a bit about early game parties in Baldur's Gate 3, what they look like depending on the companions that you bring, and kind of show you guys some real examples of how you would put a party together, you know, depending on what characters you bring, what they might look like, as well as some other recommendations about how to handle those characters. And please keep in mind that this video is aimed at beginners. I've simplified things a lot in order to make it easier for people that are not familiar with D&D. And this is not like the only way you can put parties together, but I think it'll be the least complicated for new players to the game that are just getting their feet wet so that they're not like overwhelmed with all the class selections and mechanics of this game. With those things said, let's get into it. So hopefully you watched our previous video, but if you didn't, just to catch you up a little bit, I've essentially divided each class in this game into one of five roles, or more than one of five roles if they're good at more than one of these. These are Combat Specialist, Dialogue Specialist, Utility, Support Caster, and Offensive Caster. When you take a look at your companions, they all fall into one or more of these roles. Karlak is a Combat Specialist because she's a Barbarian, so is Lysel because she is a Fighter. Astarian is a rogue, and he could also be respect into dialogue if you wanted to give him some charisma because he does have proficiency in dialogue checks. Shadowheart is a trickery cleric who is your support role, and she has a little bit more of a focus on stealth than maybe other clerics would. You can absolutely respect her into a different domain of cleric if you want. In fact, I will talk a little bit more about this later in the video. Will is a warlock, making him good at dialogue and casting ranged offensive spells, and also decent at combat because of Eldritch Blast. And Gale is an offensive caster wizard, although you can kind of, you know, give him some utility spells as well. Although I think I wouldn't recommend that to a new player, simply because they may not be familiar with the spells. And it's probably best if you're bringing Gale just to focus on offense. There are, of course, other companions you get in the game, but we're just talking a bit about early game party composition. And these are the earliest companions you can get. So we're going to be focusing on them because it'll be some time before you can recruit other companions. And one thing I'm going to suggest that you do to these companions, no matter which companions you bring, is that you respect these companions to better optimize their ability scores and their skill points. And you can do this not very far into the game, probably in the first hour or two you'll run into an NPC named Withers who will go to your camp and then you can talk to him there. He's an undead guy, very hard to miss. And once you've done this, you'll be able to respect anyone in your party, including yourself, and you'll be able to change these ability scores and skills to what you want. And I highly suggest doing this once you know what your companions are going to be, once you've got a good group, like you're pretty set on those characters. That way you can optimize them at collectively instead of like changing one and then realizing, oh, I actually don't like this guy. Let me go bring another one and change them. That'll save you gold and stuff like that. So try and optimize once you've got your entire party together, at least for the early goings to the game. That would be a good moment to go and respect. And I've laid out for you some optimal ability score spreads for each of these characters. You'll notice I have two for Shadowheart, depending on whether you want to make her dexterity or strength. But all the other ones, I've just given you one. These are very good for the early goings of the game. And you'll notice immediately that I have even ability scores for every ability here. And let me explain why that is. And the reason I've done that is because ability scores in Baldur's Gate 3 only improve at every even number. That means that if you have 12 wisdom and 13 wisdom, you still have only plus one to your ability score of wisdom. 13 effectively did nothing for you, and you'd be better off going 12 or 14. And something I want to mention is that you cannot get higher than 17 in a given ability during character creation or during respec. And 17 is kind of wasted here because, again, you have the same ability score at 17 as you do at 16, but it costs a lot more ability points to put into it to get to 17, so you're sacrificing potential gain from another ability in order to get effectively nothing. Keep in mind that you can respec in this game, so you might as well optimize for now, and then when your ability score improves at like level 4 or something like that, then you can go ahead and re-optimize if things are a little bit different. Or maybe you pick up some gear that improves your ability score by 1. Maybe you respec at that point to pick up one more point so that you are then at an even number with that piece of gear. And I also want to talk a little bit about the classes of each one of these characters, or more specifically their subclasses, if you don't plan on changing their class. I don't plan on changing their class. I just respec them to optimize their ability scores and to optimize their skills for what I want them to do, but I'm not planning on changing their class. Now, I might change their subclass in the case of Shadowheart, and we'll talk about that, but I still plan on taking them as the class that they are. We will talk a little bit about why you might want to change their class later on, but for now, let's just talk about, about you know, what subclass you might want to choose for them if you plan to, you know, leave them as the same class. So taking a look at Astarian first, I recommend either taking Assassin or Thief, and I think Assassin is the play early on, whereas Thief might be something to explore more thoroughly when you're considering multiclassing when you have a lot more levels on you, like maybe mid-game. But let me explain why I think Assassin is the way to go early on. 
The biggest thing is really that you gain advantage, or a Starion will gain advantage on his attacks on the first round of combat against enemies that haven't taken their turn yet. So, this is really important, right? Because there are two ways for a Starion to gain sneak attack. He either attacks with advantage, or he attacks an enemy that's standing next to another friendly target. Well, this means that he's automatically going to have advantage against any enemy that hasn't taken a turn on the first round. And he doesn't have to do anything. Like, he doesn't have to be hidden, he doesn't have to be invisible, they don't have to be standing next to another friendly unit or anything. His just first attack will always sneak attack in combat pretty much against the majority of enemies. So that's really huge. It makes it very easy to play a rogue and gain, you know, that sneak attack damage without having to do anything complicated. So moving on to Shadowheart, if you plan to bring Shadowheart in your party, I kind of recommend switching away from her trickery domain and into something else. And what that something else is will kind of depend on how you want to play your Shadowheart, whether you want to be more of an offensive spellcaster or more of a warrior type character. But moving away from trickery, I think, is a good play here. And there are a lot of good domains. You can pick Tempest or War if you want to be more of a martial character. Or you can pick Light if you want to be more of like a damaging spellcaster. Moving to Lyzel, I think Battlemaster is really the way to go on Lyzel, particularly early on in the game. It'll increase her damage through superiority die, allowing her to deal more damage with her attacks. And Champion is kind of boring early on in the game, honestly, because a lot of its effects are passive, so you really don't do anything other than just move an attack every turn, whereas the superiority die from Battlemaster will give you different things that you can do that really, you know, change combat a little bit for the fighter. And Eldritch Knight is a little bit more complicated for new players, and I feel like it develops and gets stronger further on into the game. So I think if you want to play an Eldritch Knight, you would probably be better respecking into that with Lyzel later on in the game, but sticking with Battlemaster earlier. Talking about Gale, I recommend going with Evocation early on in the game, and that's simply because what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that if you AoE with a spell, any of your friendly units caught in that spell take no damage. And that's just easy. Like, you don't have to then remember where to position your characters, particularly your melee characters, make sure they're out of the way so that you can fireball successfully, etc. You just use them and you're fine. So if you want to, you know, an easy time early on, evocation is the way to go. Then you don't have to worry about that. A lot of the other schools have things that, you know, you have to like remember to use them, particularly good in different situations. And the reason I like evocation is because you just take it, you forget about it, then you don't have to worry about AOEing your teammates. On Will, Will is the Fiend by default, and I recommend just sticking with that. The Fiend is probably the strongest combat of the subclasses for Warlock, and it has a lot of good bonuses. So if you're playing Will, just keep him as the Fiend. It's a good way to go. So for Karlak, I recommend going one of two different directions. If you're like a brand new newbie and you know nothing about Barbarian, but they seem fun, take Berserker and increase your strength when you get to level 4 and take that up to 18. If you're kind of like a medium-ish newbie, I would say maybe take Wild Heart, and then when you get to level 4, take the Great Weapon Master feat, and you'll basically have the same amount of attacks as Berserker when you do that, but you also hit incredibly hard when you do. So, one's a little bit more advanced and doesn't really take shape until level 4, and the other one would be good earlier on. So, some general tips here before I give you some examples of party compositions with them. Karlak and Lyzel are both combat specialists, so I don't recommend bringing them both in the same party. It will make it more challenging to fulfill the other roles, so try to pick one of these two if you're going to bring either of them, and try not to bring both of them if you can avoid it. And another thing is that Astarian is the only utility character early on in terms of companions that you can recruit, so if you don't bring Astarian with you, you will likely have to handle the utility role yourself for your character. That means that you will likely be playing a rogue, ranger, or bard. Again, you don't have to do this, but if you're talking a bit about optimization, you'll definitely want someone doing that. It's probably going to fall to you. So Rogue Ranger or Bard are good choices if you do not bring a Starion along. And Shadowheart's in a bit of the same situation, right? Like, if you bring her along, you've got a support class, but there is no other support class if you don't bring her, which means that it will probably fall to you, and you're probably going to play, like, a Bard, Cleric, or Druid. And especially, like, if you don't bring a Starion and you don't bring Shadowheart, Bard is a really good choice for you, because you can play support and utility with Bard, but with no Shadowheart, you're probably going to play a Bard, Cleric, or Druid. If you bring Will in your party, then you don't need a character that specializes in dialogue since Will will handle this for you. But if you don't have Will, you'll need somebody to take care of that, and that's either going to be you, and you'll be playing probably a Paladin, Bard, Sorcerer, or Warlock since they all have high charisma, or you could play a charisma-based rogue if you want, or you could respec uh, Astarian into charisma and make him the face if you want. Those are really your options there. I personally am a huge fan of handling my own dialogues with my own main character, 
so I like playing these classes anyway, so I probably won't bring Will in my group. And I do know that Paladin, Bard, Sorcerer, and Warlock are amongst the most popular in the game, and I think it's for that reason. And if you bring Gale in your group, then you have the offensive caster role, you know, covered. But if you don't, then you're either going to want to take Will to help cover that role, or you're going to want to be an offensive caster yourself. It means that you'll probably play a Wizard, Sorcerer, or Warlock. And something similar, like if you don't have Karlak or Lysel in your party, like if you're running without any of them, you will want to take a Martial-based class. You'll want to take either Fighter, Ranger, Paladin, Monk, Barbarian, one of those if you're not bringing Karlak or Lysel. So let's take a look at some examples here, and keep in mind that Karlak and Lysel are pretty exchangeable in terms of their class role, so this would apply no matter you know which one of these two you're bringing. But if you're bringing Karlak or Lysel, and you take Astarian and Will, you'd want to choose a Cleric, Druid, or Bard in order to pick up a support class, because you don't have Shadowheart. If you are taking Karlak, Astarian, and Gale, though, or Lysel, Astarian, and Gale, you'd want to choose Bard in order to pick up a Charisma-based class to handle dialogues and also fulfill the support role at the same time, because no Shadowheart. If you're taking Karlak or Lysel and Astarian and Shadowheart, you'd want to choose Warlock or Sorcerer in order to handle the dialogue functions of the group and the offensive spell casting. And if you take something like Karlak, Gale, and Will, you'd probably want to choose Bard in order to pick up support and utility since you're lacking a utility character and a support character since no Astarian and Shadowheart. So I hope you can see how that works. It's very easy to do once you get the hang of it and you should be able to do this yourself. But in case you are still struggling, I'll have a full list up on the screen here of all the different compositions that you can have during the beginning parts of the game using these six characters so that you know exactly which classes to choose from depending on which composition that you have. I hope you guys found this video useful. This is the last video we're going to do before we actually use real live game footage at the launch of the game and get into very specific guides with very specific things from the game, showing them actually in game as you'll be playing them. So I hope you guys are ready for that. We are going to have a lot of them. We'll have class guides, we'll have a race guide, we'll have combat mechanics guide, beginner guides, everything that you could hope for. I wanted to wait to do all these guides, those specific ones, because I want to have the actual in-game footage and I also want to make sure that nothing has changed because I could put together a lot of those guides now, but some of those things will likely have changed in the full version of the game. And I want to make sure that everything is as accurate as possible. If you guys have further questions, let me know in the comments below.